we're fighting a war with our hands tied behind our backs. Um, and not only is it affecting our exports, and you're really seeing exports decline in manufacturing. Uh, some of that is camouflaged, of course, by resource exports, but also by imports flooding in, you know, from, from countries at times that have unfair other advantages as well. So in my mind, there is no doubt at all that if we're going to create employment and create decent jobs, we're going to have to have a, a more competitive currency. It's the, it's the center of any growth creation plan. Now, when it comes to industrial policy, the industrial policy action plan too, and the new growth path, clearly earmark manufacturing is a key growth sector. So it gives a good signal to the market. But of course, the devil is in the detail. And one of the reasons for this manufacturing circle is to engage more actively with government. Where do you feel government needs to iron out the detail when it comes to this industrial policy? Well, first of all, we're very encouraged by the industrial policy. We're also very encouraged by the support we get from Minister Davies and his department. They are fully behind the um, manufacturing sector. And I think their last document that they put out a couple of weeks ago was, was excellent. It highlighted the challenges we face and, in fact, the problems we face. Um, I think we should take a leaf out of the motor manufacturing book. If we have a look at the MIDP, not perfect, but their business and government got together and created a specific framework to promote the motor industry. The South African motor industry actually shouldn't exist. We have seven OEMs, we produce less than 1% of the world's cars, and yet it does exist and it's successful. It's, it's created more investment in the manufacturing sector than any other sector, and only because we had a focused plan. We've had a process of deindustrialization taking place in the country. If you look at manufacturing share of total GDP, it's fallen from around 23% in 94 to around 16% in 2011. What then is the argument for government investing in the manufacturing sector? Where do we have a comparative advantage when you compare us to the likes of China? Well, I think in terms of our entrepreneurship, um, the talents of our people, uh, and most importantly for me is our, our um, ability to manage change. I mean, nowhere else in the world do we have as an exciting world as we have in this country. And you can just see how, how much in demand our people are throughout the world. And that's been one of the problems. We've had the skills drain. So I think we're um, a very entrepreneurial country. We have managed change. We're not very good at detail, but boy, we can make it happen. And I think that's the benefit. But you've got to create that environment. If you create the environment, then we'll make it happen. I suppose one of my few criticisms of the, of the IPAP plan is it endeavors to choose winners. And I'd rather have them, I'd rather have the economic policy creating the environment and let business itself, and manufacturing itself, then choose its own successes and, and failures. If you look at the new growth path's target of creating 350,000 jobs from the manufacturing sector by 2020, it's predominantly targeting low and semi-skilled workers. What then does this mean for highly skilled workers when the manufacturing sector is particularly facing a shortage? At last, the whole country has recognised the need for us to train artisans and to have a new initiative on this front. Um, we do need to create jobs for semi-skilled people, and we can only do that by immigrating skills at the moment. And I know, again, that's a, quite a controversial topic, but we've seen in the, in, in the past in South Africa, we've really grown where we've imported engineers, uh, management skills, and areas where we have a, a deficit of. It's not going to put South Africans out of, out, of, out of work at all. It's going to actually create employment. So one of the, again, one of the cornerstones we're looking at is to encourage um, uh, immigration, encourage skilled people to come into this country and assist us in the skill shortage because if we if we create the skills you're going to create the jobs lower down the the, the food chain